Good evening, Mustang football fans. Sorry for the weather delay, but Mother Nature had different ideas about tonight, but we are underway. Jacob Dedimore here along with Tim Smith on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. And this battle for the 4-5A Division II district title is about to get started here at Mustang Panther Stadium between the 8-0 Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets and your 7-1 Grapevine Mustangs. The Mustangs kicked off to start the game, and it was a touchback. So the Heights offense is going to start from their own 25-yard line. And we'll get things going for you here as the game gets started. First down and 10 for Arlington Heights. Handoff going to the far right side, getting around the corner. And the corner is reached up to the 45, up to midfield and into Grapevine territory. The leading rusher for this team, Brian Furch, number 22, who comes into this game tonight with 1,184 yards on the season and 19 touchdowns. Yeah, Jacob, the Arlington Heights has 2,449 yards on the ground on the year so far, so you expect them to have a heavy dose of run game tonight. Both of these teams are going to try and install their, instill their will running the ball. It's going to be a lot of shotgun split back that you see right now for Arlington Heights. They, like Grapevine, like to run the ball a lot. First and ten. Handoff. This time going over the, around the left side. Tackle broken and now tackle made. Latham way. Got stiff arm but stayed with it and brought down Furch after a gain of two at the Grapevine 46. It's second and eight. Let's give you the Grapevine starting defense. We'll start up front. Dalton Knapp and Tristan Sneed are your Dalton two ends. Leighton Towery also linebacker. and Devin Thomas. Leighton Towery, athlete. Devin Thomas, defensive tackle. Tristan Sneed, outside linebacker. Latham Way, linebacker. Tyler Mears, linebacker. Latham Way again with the big stop as he comes over that time. He's on the same side of the formation, and it's a little bit of an easier play for him. Brian Furch is the uh, bell cow for this running offense, number 22. You just saw him on the last few carries. Gains four yards there, sets up third and four for the Yellow Jackets at their at the Grapevine 42-yard line. Again, we're only a minute into this ball game. These two teams both coming into tonight undefeated in district play, each at 5-0. and oh. Third and four for the Yellow Jackets. In their shotgun split back, twins to the left this time. Your other starting running back is number 29, Brandon Monroe. Eric Orozco, the starting quarterback, number five. Monroe averaging about 78 yards. A game on the ground. Hand off on third down, and Grapevine stones them. Great job. C.J. Holmes coming in on the corner blitz was the first guy there. Latham Way was in on the play also. They were ready for it that time, and they drop Furch for a loss to make it fourth and five. We'll see what the Yellow Jackets do. It looks like they are going to bring on the punt team. Latham Way, the senior, knowing how important this game is, number one seed on the line, district championship on the line, making his presence known early in this one. Punt team is on for the Yellow Jackets. The punter, Alberto Shavola, he's also the starting linebacker. We'll talk about this Arlington Heights defense here in a few minutes. But Shavola, number 16, back to punt. Parker Polk at his own seven-yard line waiting to receive this kick. Snap is a little off to the right, but the kick is away. It's towards the sideline. It's a sideways kick. It's going to hit it the inside the 30, take a bit of a heights roll, and roll down to the 20-yard line, only a 23-yard punt. And now it's time to give you the great bond offensive starters for tonight's game. Travis Mason, studs. Alex Hogan, offensive line. Cy Owen, studs. Hunter Cottle, offensive line. Max Livingston, stud. Sammy Kelly, wide receiver. Rondell Carradine, wide receiver. Parker Polk, running back. Evan Baum, quarterback. Hank Miller, tight end. Caden Cook, wide receiver. Hand off to Parker Polk on first down. Gets about four yards out to the 24-yard line to set up second and six. Starting out tonight, it was Reed Watkins out there with Parker Polk as the two backs out of that pistol offset pistol formation. And they had Baum out there with uh, Sammy Kelly at your wide receivers. They come out now second down and six. Grapevine from their 24 in the power pistol with three running backs. Baum, the starting quarterback, of course. Snap back. It's going to be a handoff to Polk again up the middle. Not much room this time, only about a yard. And now let's talk about this Arlington Heights defense. They run mostly 4-3. They'll switch into some nickel formation. Your starting defensive line, number three, Kanan James. Number 85, Omar Ramirez. Number 59, Kamai Foster. James, by the way, is a freshman. 
number 93, Aaron Barbie, is your starting defensive line. Your three linebackers, which are very good and very active. Number 97, Henry Mankin. Number 16, Alberto Shavola. And number 9, Roy Wright, the leader of this defense. Your two cornerbacks, number 18, Markel Sanders. Number 12, Josiah Hunter. Your free safety, number 1, Keith Gidry. And your strong safety, number 21, Lamont Mont Mantia. Little quick snap, little quick screen to Carradine. Makes a man miss. Up to the 30. Here he goes up the sideline to midfield to the 45, to the 40, and finally knocked out of bounds as the cornerback, Markel Sanders, finally came over to make the play and knocked him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A gain of 40 yards for Rondell Carradine. We talk about Rondell Carradine. Right now he is second on the team in total yardage at 497 on the season with six touchdowns. The last couple of games, Tim, he has really gotten involved, not only in the run game, but in the pass game. Yeah, and Arlington Heights gets themselves in trouble. They blitz two off the edge on the play side, allowing uh, Carradine to be one-on-one -on -one with the screen pass, and he's going to win that most of the time. First and 10 at the Heights, 35. Speed option. Pitch out to Carradine this time, and he is brought down for a loss all the way back at the 39 for a loss of four. Here's what we were about to talk about with this Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets defense. They run a 4-3 scheme with a lot of zone blitzing. They're averaging about six tackles for loss a game, about a little over two sacks a game, and two turnovers per game. And that front seven, that 4-3 front seven, they blitz from all gaps and all angles. Yeah, it's a little bit of a risk-reward, especially with the way Grapevine throws their screens and their play action. So we're going to see how that uh, transpires throughout the game with this rain as well. They just dropped Carradine for a loss of four on that play, second and 14. Now Baum's going to throw. Pass is out and caught up to inside the 35. Caden Cook makes a man miss inside the 30, and then he is finally brought down as they try to strip the ball. He's going to get brought down just inside the 29-yard line. It's going to be a gain of a little over 10 yards. It's going to uh, set up now about a third and we'll call it a, a short five coming up here. Sure. Nice job by Cook after making the catch. Good throw by Baum on that out on the near sideline. You're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage, and what Baum is doing a great job here early is recognizing where the blitz is coming from, where his mismatch is, and getting the ball to that player. And then we're getting we're seeing nice catch and runs after getting us in a nice short and medium short, third and short rather power pistol here on third and now they moved it up to the 28 third and four here power pistol formation snap back speed option and bomb tucks it inside and keeps it and he's going to get the first down great decision by bomb he made the defender commit to Carradine with a bit of a little juke step and then cut it up inside and got down to the 23 to move the chains he's certainly shown that he can make the right decision more times than not in this option game. Did a great job there because if he pitches it, probably going to have a chance to lose yards, and he, he throws out a little fake pitch and does what he can, get the yardage, get the first down, and Grapevine's first drive, very impressive. Gain of five yards sets up now first and ten at the Heights 23-yard line. 6-18 to go here in the first quarter. Power pistol, now Hank Miller moves up as an H-back. Snap back, handoff to Polk. No, it's a pitch out to Carradine. He's inside the 10, the 5, and he walks it into the corral for a touchdown. They got me for a second there. I thought he gave it to Polk, but Baum kept it, pitched it out to Carradine in open space, and that speed just turned on its jets right there, and Carradine with his seventh touchdown of the season. Two things to note on there. Number 55, Hunter Cadill, a pancake with extra syrup in the middle of the field, and then... We saw number 18, the tight end, Hank Miller, go in motion. He becomes the lead blocker, and he set that edge. He blocked his man 15 yards downfield to create that wide open hole for the touchdown. Hayden Rhodes on for the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 6.04 to go here in the first quarter. Grapevine now leads 7-0. You're watching Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. We love our Mustang football and we also love our students. We're so excited for an opportunity to come alongside parents and schools as we shape the next generation of leaders. And we love to welcome you and your whole family on a Sunday morning and your students to join us on a Wednesday night. Our students have fun while learning to love God through his word and also love others through selfless service. All right, enough about what we can do for you. Let's get back to the game. Go Mustangs. Time and a place for everything. Back here at Mustang Panther Stadium, the Mustangs go 80 yards on their opening possession and punch it in for the touchdown after the defense forced a punt. And so the Mustangs lead 7-0. Hayden Rhodes lining up for the kick. 
Line drive kickoff here, and it'll go over the head of the return man and into the end zone. Back to receive that time was number one, Keith Guidry, the junior defensive back. So we saw a little bit of success from Heights with their run game on the first possession, but Grapevine stood up, got, got a stop, and then the Grapevine offense came out and varied it up. Didn't just run it. You know, they did their option games, but they also had a nice little quick pass out to Carradine. You know, the, I think what we see here, this this Heights team, we were talking about this during the weather delay. This Heights team has some talent. Obviously, they're 8-0, but they're not a deep team. So it's it, this could be one of those games, a little bit of attrition, you know, see if Grapevine can kind of wear this team down. Well, certainly a great way to start for Grapevine just as they rode it up in the – in the locker room coming out before the game. First and 10, handoff right up the middle this time, and it is Furch just powering the pile forward. They're going to get out all the way to about the 30-yard line for a gain of five and a first down, and we do have players either hurt or getting untangled. I think they're just getting untangled down there. Actually, the ball carry that time was 29 Brandon Monroe, not 22 Furch. So your starters on offense for the Heights, Yellow, Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets, number five, Eric Orozco, the junior quarterback. Your two running backs, number 22, Brian Furch. He is a senior. Number 29, Brandon Monroe. He is also a senior. Handoff on second down. Again, up the middle, across the 30 to about the 32 where the action is stood up and pushed back. They're going to give him forward progress to the 33, so it'll be third and two coming up as a gaggle of Mustangs stood up everything that time. Your two starting wide receivers, number seven, Tymir Bisco, he is a junior. And number eight, Anthony Lara, he's also a junior. Your starting tight end is number 84, Micah Powell, the senior. We'll give you the starting offensive line here in just a moment. Third and two now for the Yellow Jackets at their own 33-yard line. This split back set that you see will be the shotgun split back set is what they run almost everything out of through the Yellow Jackets. Snap back, Aras is going to throw for the first time. Lobs one deep up the sideline. The pass is incomplete. Looked like... The, the leading wide receiver, Tymir Briscoe, the junior, was trying to track that ball over his head, and as it came over his head, he just couldn't, he didn't get his arms extended out far enough, and it went off his fingertips. Yeah, look, from here, it looked like a really good throw. I think you're right. I think the receiver just had a hard time tracking that ball. There was good coverage on the play by number 13, uh, Burns, but, uh, but really, I thought that, that ball should have been caught, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to make up for that a little bit later in the game. You hate to see... The, you know, the kids have the ball go right through your hands like that, but that's look, that's what it looked like happened from up here. High snap on the punt, but it gets away, but it's high and short. It's going to hit at the grapevine 45 and then die at about the 43. So, again, not a very long punt, only about 20 yard, uh, 25 yards on the punt. As there was, it, it, the, punt, the snap was off and to the left, and the grapevine player rushing almost like he, he hesitated because he didn't want to run into the punter. And that ended up allowing uh, the punter, Chirola, uh, to get the punt away. In this type Chibola. of weather, the rain is the great equalizer, but it really can come into play on these special teams because there's so much additional ball handling. And then you see when the ball hits the turf, it's so wet, it just stops. There's absolutely no bounce. There's a steady light rain coming down right now that's, I'm sure, affecting everybody out there. So the Mustangs will take over first and 10 at their own 43, already up 7-0, 432 to go here in the first quarter. Mustangs come out in a three wide set this time with an H back. Parker Polk in the backfield. Plenty of time, Carradine comes in motion. It's gonna be a handoff to Polk up the middle. Dancing, now he's got some room across midfield. Try to break to the outside, he gets the corner. 40, 35, breaking inside, makes a man miss and finally brought down at the 30. A 27 yard run for Parker Polk on first down as the Great Vaughn offensive line opened up a hole up the middle and allowed Parker to get some open space. And Caden Cook, as, is, as it was said a week ago, receivers, uh, or I'm sorry, linemen blocked for first down, receivers blocked for touchdowns. And he's all the way downfield making that big block. What a great run by Coop, by uh, Parker Park. Polk there. Now, there was almost illegal formation. Credit to the Mustang coaching staff for correcting that from the sideline before it could be a flag. First and 10 now at the 31-yard line of Arlington Heights. Snap back. Speed option. And Baum keeps it. He's in the inside the 30 and just dragged down. What a tackle that time Woo. by number 97, the outside linebacker, Henry Mankin who came up and made a great open field tackle. The senior got a hold of the jersey of Baum and didn't let go as he fought off a block. And fooled me. I thought I thought Parker had the ball going on the other side of the field, <laughs> but didn't fool didn't fool that defense, that's for sure. Mankin, Henry, uh, Henry, uh, yeah, Henry Mankin, number 97, comes into this game 
with some really good sets. He's, he's tied for the team lead with four sacks on the season and also is tied for, the te- or is tied for third in the team with seven tackles for a loss. Second and eight now at the 29-yard line. Carradine comes in motion. It is going to be a handoff to Polk. Dancing around up the middle inside the 20, inside the 15, and tripped up. Almost scored on that one right there, but got down to the 11-yard line, 18-yard run, and a first down for Parker Polk. Polk coming into this game tonight with 1,082 yards rushing on the season and 16 touchdowns, averaging 8.2 yards a carry. And making... Again, number 97, he's the one that saves the day and comes in and is able to bring Parker down from behind. These three linebackers for Arlington Heights are the leaders of this defense, and they are led by number nine, uh, Roy Wright. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Wagner, Brady Wagner, steps up as an H-back out of the power pistol. It's going to be a handoff again. Polk's got room inside the five and into the corral for the touchdown. A 10-yard, an 11-yard touchdown run from Parker Polk and the Mustangs have jumped out early to a two-score lead. That is a fantastic job by the left side of the offensive line, particularly number 72, Braden Johnson, who comes off the left side, and he's able to get right up to that second level and seal off the outside linebacker, which causes that hole for Parker to run through. The Mustangs, after the weather delay of a little over an hour, have come out and come out strong in this battle for the district championship. Just a fantastic job on both sides of the ball so far for Grapevine. High snap, but it's picked up, and the kick is up and good. 2.33 to go in the first quarter. Mustangs lead 14-0. This is Grapevine Mustangs football presented by Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Each year across the United States, young lives are lost to sudden cardiac arrest and our communities are left to pick up the pieces. That's what happened in April of 2009 when Zachary Shaw lost his life to an undiagnosed heart condition after collapsing suddenly during a Plano East Senior High School football practice. After his death, Zach's loved ones knew it was time to take action to protect young hearts across North Texas from this silent killer. Since its establishment in 2009, Living for Zachary has impacted thousands of families by providing heart screenings for ages 12 to 22, donating AEDs to youth-based organizations, and training community members in the use of CPR, all with the goal of saving lives. Sudden cardiac arrest doesn't wait, so we can't either. Schedule your child's heart screening today, apply for an AED for your organization, or make a donation that could change a life forever. Together, we can give our children's hearts a second chance. The kickoff is away from Hayden Rhodes, and once again, it goes into the end zone for a touchback as the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets will now take over at their own 25-yard line. The Mustangs on that possession go 57 yards for the touchdown after the short punt. This time, Parker Polk is the one who takes it in the end zone. He also had the big run on that drive of 30 yards. This is a pivotal drive for Arlington Heights. You feel Dalton you out, the sense outside that they linebacker. Get something going here and they give the ball back. Clayton Towery, again, athlete. Devin Thomas, defensive tackle. And again, you know, we Tristan Sneed, outside linebacker. Latham Way, linebacker. Band. I don't even believe he's going to be here. Tonight. Tyler Mears, linebacker. Fans in the stands. First down, handoff to Furch. One around right side. He's got room up the sideline, up to the 40, up to midfield, and knocked out of bounds in Grapevine territory. They're going to mark him out at the 46-yard line of Grapevine. A 29-yard run from Brian Furch. He had a big run on that first drive as well before Grapevine slowed him down. But that time, again, same thing, just a sweep around the right side. He got that corner and got big yardage. And he's averaging almost 150 yards per game on the ground, so you expect he's going to get his yards. But Grapevine has to do a better job of corralling him. That's his second big run here tonight. First and 10 now for Heights. At the Grapevine 46-yard line. Yeah, you talked about uh, Furch and his rushing yards this season. 8.3 yards a carry, 148 yards a game on the ground, 19 touchdowns. This time, Orozco keeps it, and he gets blasted in the backfield. Tyler Mears coming on the blitz, met Orozco in the backfield and dropped him for a loss of three on the play. Right now, let's give you the starting defensive backfield for Redden the Webb, Grapevine. Defensive back. Hunter Lasher, safety. Major Hack, free safety. Drew Nelson, safety. CJ Holmes, DB, running back. What a play by Tyler Mears on first down, second and 13 now at the 49 of Grapevine. At first time tonight, Orozco's kept the ball, and he got blasted for it. Yeah, he won't want to keep it too many more times if he's going to take hits like that. 
Handoff to Monroe on second down. He's barely going to get past the line of scrimmage. Latham Way met him in the hole. He's going to get forward progress of a yard. The ball came out, but well after the forward progress whistle had been blown as C.J. Holmes took off with the ball. But a great job by the Grapevine defense. Latham Way just reading it, meeting the running back in the hole and stoning Monroe right at the line of scrimmage. You know, the thing about this defense is they almost get insulted when you get a big play on them. And, <laughs> and so the last time they had two shutdown plays after the big run, and here uh, after that big run a few moments ago, two plays in a row, they've gotten them behind the line of scrimmage. and. Now you've got them in the third and long, right where you want yes. them to be. This Heights team is not very efficient passing the ball. You want them behind the chains. Third and thir third and 12, handoff behind the line. It's going to be a stop. You see it right there. They tried to catch Grapevine off guard by running the ball on third down. But Grapevine was all over it, stopped him for no gain. That was Monroe again. And check me, that was Furch this time who carried the ball. And he was stoned right at the line of scrimmage. And three, three possessions for Arlington Heights, three punts forced by the grapevine defense. And that was Drew Nelson that made that initial play. He didn't make the tackle, but he made the initial penetration. It's important to note, he's playing hurt tonight, folks. He's got a little bit of a stomach bud. He's trying to pull out his Michael Jordan flu game tonight because he knows how important this game is. Chavola on for his third punt. Another high snap and picked up. He's able to get it away, but again, it's short. And coming up, it hit the up back that time. Parker Polk made the fair catch signal, and you're going to get uh, kick catch interference yes. because they didn't get out of his way. Which, you, When you see the fair catch, you have to get out of the way of the return man. And that time he didn't get out of the, the defensive player for Arlington Heights, didn't get out of the way and prevented Parker from making the fair catch. So really they're kind of a high IQ play right there by Polk. Made the fair catch, knew he could run into the guy, and the, there wouldn't be any uh, negative aspect of it. Yeah, you absolutely have to give the return man an opportunity to catch the ball. The flag was a little late coming out, but Coach Alexander was not happy and let them know immediately that that should be a foul. The flag came out. Now the the, the officials conversing about this, not sure what they're discussing. Well, I mean, discussing. he may, you, you, you know, you, the defender has a right to his position in one respect, but when the guy makes the fair catch, you have to move and you let him to, make the catch. Correct. You have he has to, to give, give him an opportunity. You, you, he, the, the halo violation, as they call it. Let's see what the call here is. It is a kick okay. catch interference. They converge, but that is they the right get it call. Right. As long as they get it right. Obviously, the defender running down to cover can't see where the, the, the punt correct. is short. But if you see the return man running at you, you have to back up you and let him move. catch it yeah it's, it's not so much as the cornerback scenario where you have to kind of turn your head to look for the ball no you just have to get out of you his way and let him way. let him attempt to make the catch so add 15 yards on to that punt which was downed at the 28 initially and so grapevine for the second straight possession starts at their own 43 first and 10 three wide two backs here on first down shotgun Carradine coming in motion. It's a handoff to Reed Watkins. He's got room up the middle, almost to midfield before he's finally brought down. That's a gain of six. First carry of the night for Reed Watkins, and there's that man again, Henry Mankin, making plays for this Arlington Heights defense. He is all over the field, and look at what Arlington Heights has done now. They've taken a couple players out of the box on that play. They didn't have anybody blitzing because Grapevine has shown them that they can complete passes down this the This first quarter was brought to you by our friends at 121 Community Church, and we have come to the end of the first quarter with Grapevine leading Arlington Heights 14-0. You are listening and watching Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Bottle Cap Alley is a place where hot food meets a cool vibe for big-time fun. We're the stomping grounds for friends and family to gather and enjoy themselves. Here, everybody is somebody. We take great pride in our food and the people we serve. So whether you're here to watch the game or just popping in for a quick bite, we're always happy to see you. Back for the start of the second quarter. Mustangs have the ball at their own 49-yard line, second and four. First on, on the snap, handoff up the middle. Parker Polk going to get the first down and move the chains. 
as Parker, I mean, he's like a ballet dancer when he has a little bit of space in the middle of that line. He just dances, hot feet on his tiptoes, just kind of picking his way through, and that time he got six yards to the 45 of the Yellow Jackets. A little Tony two-tap action, kind of light on his feet, probably really good on the dance floor is Parker Polk. First and 10 for the Mustangs now at the Arlington Heights 45. Mustangs lead 14 to nothing. Two backs in the shotgun on first down. Hand off to Reed Watkins, and he's got the corner inside the 35, the 30, and finally tripped up. Coming up to make the play on him that time was number 18, Markel Sanders, the cornerback. But, man, they blocked that right side and got the corner for Reed Watkins. That's a gain of 16 yards. One missed tackle on one of these great vine running backs, and that's what can happen that fast because these linemen are going to lock up their men. They're going to get down to the second level. They pick up linebackers, and that allows Reed Watkins to get that corner and get all the way downfield, almost hurdle the man. Great run. Watkins coming into the game second on the team and rushing 372 yards and six touchdowns, averaging 10 yards a carry. First and 10 at the 29. Hank Miller steps up as the H back out of the power pistol. Handoff up the middle. Polk looking for room. He's going to find a little bit, but not much. Maybe about three yards down to the 26 before he was brought down that time. In on the tackle for the Yellow Jackets was number 97, Henry Mankin. Mama, there go that man again. This offensive line, though, I'm going to tell you, Jacob, they are moving the line of scrimmage. All you see is the line of scrimmage being moved at the snap of the football, and that's going to give you an opportunity to get yards. And if you can get three to four yards per carry every time with a couple big pops, that's all you're looking for from this great Vine offense. What's four times three, Tim? Twelve. That's right. How many yards do you need for a first down? Ten. Very good. I did pretty quick math. <laughs> Second and seven for the Mustangs at the Heights 26. Snap is back. Play action, Baum looking to throw. Now he's going to step up and try to get what he can, and he's going to get dropped right about the line of scrimmage as the pocket collapsed around Baum pretty quickly with that blitzing defense. Mankin once again in on the tackle, along with number 59, Kamai Foster, the defensive lineman, as you know, this, this attacking scheme by Heights, they will get their negative plays on you at times. The, the question, the goal for the offense is to limit them and get big pops. They're reading Bomb now, so what they're doing is they're coming up, they're showing the blitz when Bomb drops back to throw, the defenders kind of drop back and now they're playing a little bit of a spy roll, so real good defensive scheme on that particular play. Officially a loss of a yard, Carradine comes in motion on third down, handoff to Polk, dancing up the middle, but he gets stopped. Great job that time, staying home by the linebackers once again, Henry Mankin, he was joined that time by his teammate, number 11 Kellen uh, Petri. The, one of the reserve linebackers who checked in that time. They stopped Parker Polk for only a gain of two yards on third down, fourth down, and the field goal team is on for the Mustangs as they're waiting for somebody to come out there. There we go. Now we got the man running back out there. Max Livingston had to get back out there for field goal duty. Oh, this is going to be a 42-yard field goal for Hayden Rhodes. This would be a season long for Rhodes. He's three of five on the season. Snap is down. The kick is a line drive, and it's no good. That one, that time, it's not a good kick from Rhodes. He hit the middle of the ball, didn't get underneath it, and it's no good from 42 yards out, and the Heights Yellow Jackets get their first stop of the game. Yeah, th this sort of weather is going to play most havoc on your kickers, right? Arlington Heights has changed a little bit on that particular series. They went from an attacking defense to a read and react type defense. If I'm great buying, when I come back out, I'm going to look at running a few counters now to catch them in their read and react scenario. Yeah, that time, just, you know, the, the first stop of the night, I mean, the, the Mustangs obviously got yards but couldn't finish the drive that time. The rain, for the most part, looks like it's almost stopped completely yes. for the moment. We'll cross our fingers and hope that sticks around. That time, I think that, you know, that was a longer field goal for Hayden Rhodes, and I think he just tried to maybe kick a little too much of the middle of the ball to drive it and just got just didn't get underneath it enough. First down, play action, deep throw, up the seam. That pass is incomplete as, once again, he was trying to go for his leading wide receiver, number seven, Tymir Bisco, on the coverage that time was Hunter Lasher, number 25. He was with him step for step. And again, Bisco, it just looked like he was having a little trouble locating the ball. He was looking for a flag, but that still looked like a catchable ball for Bisco. Yeah, it did look like that, but like you say again, from up here, everything looks catchable. But that, that coverage was step for step, which causes the receiver a little trepidation and not able to track the ball as good as maybe he should. Second and 10 now, and now we're going to have a timeout. 
by the Heights coaching staff as they didn't have the personnel they wanted out there for this second down play. We'll take it with them. 8.36 to go in the first half. 14-0 Grapevine. This is Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Hey guys, this is Jose with Infinity Solar. Today we're out here in McKinney, Texas. 48 panels, 18.24 kilowatts, which yearly they're going to get a total production of 20,664 kilowatts. That's more, more production than they need, so the electrical company will be able to give them credit for some of that energy that they're going to be saving. Today we have the Silfab panel. It's a U.S. manufactured, comes with a 30-year warranty, some of the best warranty in the industry right now. A job this size usually takes companies two days to complete. We're going to knock it out in one day. So that works great for our customers. That way they don't have to worry about taking two days off from work. They just have to take one day, maybe even half a day. So we'll get this customer up and going, ready for the city inspection, and get them up and going with their system. After the timeout, it's second and 10 for Heights. At their own 25 yard line, Grapevine leading this game 14 to nothing. As they scored touchdowns on their first two possessions, the last possession for Grapevine coming up short with a missed field goal attempt. Now they change formation here and go with the double tight end set. It's gonna be a keep by Orozco. He's gonna find some room up to the 30, 35, breaking tackles all the way out to the 40. Strong run that time by the junior quarterback, Eric Orozco, breaking multiple tackles. We're finding a little bit of room and getting a 16-yard gain all the way out to the 41. Yeah, once again, Arlington Heights showing that they are a very good run team. Their offensive line is big, and they know how to move that line of scrimmage as well. We'll give you the starting offensive line for these, this Yellow Jackets team here in just a moment as they have first down and 10 now at their own 41-yard line. Again, these two teams coming into tonight, both 5-0 and in district. Little quick pass on first down. It's high, but it's caught, and up the field goes Bisco. Made a great grab that time, and in the process of going up for the ball, we do have a flag down, so some of this may be coming back. We may have a downfield hold on this, but they tried the bubble screen that time, and a great leaping grab by Bisco, and as he went to get it, it allowed him to make a tackle get missed, and yeah, I think we there's, got a hold around midfield. There's a, it looked like a block in the back or a hold by that initial receiver on the initial block. That is the call, so that basically erases the gain because it's a spot foul, and they're gonna end up, I think, losing a yard in the process, so it'll end up being a one-yard penalty, and it'll be first and 11 now at the 40. Now here they are in that same formation, but now that trip side is to the short side of the field, so I imagine we might see a little bit of a lead run coming this way towards the wide side of the field. They're looking to the sideline right now. This split back set out of the shotgun is what you will see most of the time. Now they move a little bit more with uh, the running back moving up as an H-back. Orozco keeps again. This time, Grapevine plays it well. Number 95, Ty Hohenberger breaking through and trailing the play nicely and making a really good tackle at the line for a gain of one yard. They did get back to the 41, but a great play by Ty Hohenberger on first down. Well, if we're going to predict where the play and what the play is going to be, I imagine <laughs> the Grapevine coaches know that as well, put their kids in the perfect spot, and they play that perfectly, does the Grapevine defense. Second and 10 now after the one-yard game by Orozco. That really is kind of a tell. They might run some play action off that, but having the running back step up as an H-back sets them up for that quarterback lead. It's going to be a handoff to first. No, Orozco keeps it. He's around the left side, up to midfield. Now he's in the Grapevine territory at the 45. Great play that time. Little zone read action is all it is. Orozco pulls the ball out, and that lets Furch be the lead blocker, and they just take that left side corner and get 14 yards into Grapevine territory. Yeah, it's still, a, it's still a zone read because he's still reading that defensive end and linebacker combination, but when he realizes he should take it, you're right. Furch becomes that lead blocker, and he was blocking all the way down to the 25-yard line creating some space for his quarterback. First and 10 at the Mustang 45 now for the Yellow Jackets. All three of their drives have gotten into Mustang territory, but they've stalled right at about this spot just in, over just over midfield. First and 10. Snap back. Hand off to Furch up the middle this time, and he gets into that gap. But the ball comes out. We'll see who recovered it. The ball came out, Great and Grapevine has, has it. The ball was fumbled by Furch as he got over the line of scrimmage, got about three yards, and the ball came out as he was going to the ground. Number 95 recovered. Ty Hohenberger, who made the play a couple of plays ago, got on the fumble. 
Kai Just Hohenberger, the sophomore, sophomore who plays Bruce. offensive line and defensive line, yeah. comes through, sees the ball, falls on it, falls on the ball like Drew a piece Nelson. of cake. Drew, so delicious. Drew Nelson came in and stripped that ball out of Furch's hand as he came around the side to make the tackle. Drew Nelson with his MJ flu performance. First and 10, handoff to Parker Polk up the middle. Decent running room on first down. Going to get about four out to the 47 before he's brought down by once again. Henry Mankin, who is in on almost every play right now for Heights. He sure is. I don't know how you stop him, Jacob. He's all over the place. He's sideline to sideline. He's in the backfield. You have to get a blocker he's, to just account for him almost on every play. Well, sure he's, they the, have that. he's the Latham way of this defense. He's he the sure middle linebacker is. in this formation, and he is playing fantastic middle linebacker so far. Second and six now for the Mustangs at their own 47. This time they go four wide, two to each side. Snap back, little bubble screen caught by Carradine. Makes a man miss at midfield, gets the first down and gets down to about the 46. Seven-yard gain by Rondale Carradine. Great blocking by Sammy Kelly that time on the bubble screen. Glad you said it because I certainly was going to point it out. I love when these wide receivers get their block game on and Sammy Kelly laying it on the line for his teammate out there. First and ten now the Mustangs. After the first turnover of the ball game, forced by Drew Nelson, recovered by Ty Hohenberger. We talk about Hohenberger. He did start out the season on, as a reserve offensive lineman and moved to D-line. Offset pistol here. Wagner moving from the right to the left side of the formation. Snap is back. Polk gets it on first down and not much room, only about a yard before he's hit. As that time, it was number 16, the outside linebacker Alberto Chavola, who got him after only a yard gain. This defense for Arlington Heights, they're tough, and they will come at you from all different angles. You're going to get some plays on them. You look at the numbers. You, they've given up some stuff this year, but they also they make up for that with negative plays and turnovers. They sure do. They, they've turned the ball over. I think they've gotten about 18 turnovers, you yeah, said, Yeah, 16, this year. I believe, 16 this year. They've this got year. nine interceptions and seven fumble recoveries, and it's spread out all along their defense, those sure. numbers. Just like their tackles for loss. Mm -hmm. Snap back, handoff to Watkins. Got room up the middle inside the 40, down to the 39. Gain of six by Reed Watkins, and now we've got guys continuing their block and playing downfield, so. Looked like just good, tough play, Jacob. Yeah. Neither, neither kid had any male intentions there. They kind of get tangled up with each other and go down. Cook was just blocking all the way down the field. All and, the way, yeah. I love that tenacity from me. I mean, these kids love to get out and block. You talked about it last week. Last year, they threw the ball over the yard. They, they, all, all the receivers had a lot of catches. This year, they're being asked to do more blocking, and they've embraced it. Third and three now at the 39-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Two receivers to the left. Snap back. Hand off to Polk. He's going to get the first down inside the 35. Down to about the 33. It'll be a gain of no, another six-yard gain from Polk. And that time, that was just the grapevine offensive line with Brady Wagner kind of acting as a lead blocker as the H-back. And they just moved the line. You could just see the whole line just move down the field. And it's been like that all night. And I'll tell you, these tight ends are just as important as these offensive linemen. And uh, Hank Miller and Brad, uh, Brady Wagner are two incredible blockers as well as pass catchers. So two very big pieces of this offense are their tight ends. First and 10 at the 33 now for the Mustangs. Brady Wagner moving at, from the H back on the right side to the left side. Snap back, hand off to Polk. Nope, Baum keeps it. He's inside the 30 and gets ankle tackled down to the 27. I'll tell you what, that was a really nice tackle by Keith Gidry, number one, the free safety. Baum... Would have probably got, a, a, probably, I bet, another five yards out of that if not for the nice open field tackle. Yeah, heck of a tackle there in the open field. It fooled me again. I was watching Livingston, number 74, on the right side. He was blocking two or three people, but Parker didn't have the ball in his hands. <laughs> second, and, second and four now. It was a six-yard gain for Evan Baum on first down. Second and four at the 27. 2.33 to go here in the first half. Snap back, handoff. Polk's got the corner. He's inside the 20, the 10, the 5, and he walks it into the corral for the touchdown. They sealed off the left side, and Parker Polk just turned on the Jets and took it into the end zone. Once again, Braden Johnson, a pancake with extra syrup on the left side. You can see him. He just collapses that left side, allowing Parker Polk to get to the corner. Touchdown, Mustangs. The Mustangs, after coming up without any points on their last possession into Heights territory, capitalized this time getting, getting points after the fumble. And now they have really put some distance between themselves and the Yellow Jackets 
late here in the first half. Hayden Rhodes on for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, kick is on the way, and it is good. 2.24 to go in the first half. Mustangs now leading 21 to nothing in this battle for the district title in 4-5A Division II. This is Great Vine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. So I think one of the most important parts of dentistry is the patient education and the emphasis on preventive care. And I think our office, along with all of our hygienists, do a really great job in the patient care and patient education. We can fix problems all day long, but if the patient doesn't know what's causing those problems, then we're not giving them the tools to fix them. And so that's one of our main goals here at Fielder Park. For 13 straight years, Forbes.com has named Prosperity as one of America's best banks. To Prosperity's customers and employees, thank you for helping us maintain this national distinction. Prosperity Bank, real bankers, not just a bank. A 57-yard, excuse me, not 57, 62-yard touchdown drive that time by the Grapevine Mustangs that was started thanks to the fumble, the strip by Drew Nelson that was recovered by Ty Hohenberger. The Mustangs take advantage. Kickoff is a line drive, hits at the 10. It's going to be picked up in return. Up to the 15, going to all the way across to the far side of the field. 20, 25, staying on his feet. 35, 40, 45, and almost all the way out to midfield. One of the best returns of the season that the Grapevine kickoff team has allowed. Just a great job that time by number one, Keith Gidry. The junior defensive back knew his blocking was on the far side of the field, so he took it all the way across, found gaps, broke a couple of ankle tackles, and got it out to midfield. That some fabulous blocking and really uncharacteristic for a grapevine kickoff team to give up that sort of return. But that's maybe the shot in the arm that this team needs. I mean, 21 to nothing, that's typically a pass-the-stick situation, and they really need to get something on the board before halftime. And it looks, off looks like we had a penalty. It must have been an offside or something on the kickoff because they just tacked on five yards to the end of the return. So the Yellow Jackets now will start this possession after the 42-yard return and the five-yard penalty at the Grapevine 45. Going empty here on first down. Orozco dropping back to pass. Now he's scrambling. He throws it backwards and out of bounds. That's got it. I've Either never seen that before. That is intentional grounding at the least, but yeah, that, I, that pass went backwards, but I just don't think the referees had the angle to tell that it went backwards. We could see it from up here, but it is intentional grounding because he was in the pocket without question and just threw it to the sideline behind the line of scrimmage. So it'll be a spot, it'll be a 10 yard penalty. Let's see, actually it's a spot foul. Well, it's incomplete. It's incomplete, so you lose, you lose that yardage and you're right there was no receiver and the ball never got to the line of scrimmage so it's a clear case and i think i think they may have actually noticed that pass went backwards and so they marked it at yeah, the 40 where exactly. it went out of bounds because it was a lateral so that's a loss of 15 on first down and orozco just panicked i mean the, the pocket got to him quick uh going empty on first down and he just just unleashed it out of bounds second down handoff up the middle Furch. Finds some room, get, but gets ankle tackled after about a five-yard gain out to the 45-yard line. That time, Latham Way, the middle linebacker, coming through and making the grab on Furch. I'll tell you what, that might have prevented a pretty sizable gain by Furch on that play. I agree. Without question, Latham Way makes a, a, a touchdown-saving tackle, perhaps, because the edge was sealed, and he had a long way to go out there if that tackle's not made. Second, it's going to be third and 20 now after the run by Furch. Arlington Heights does not have a lot of plays in their playbook to cover a third and 20. Now, this kind of an offense, this is not what they're set up for. Snap back to Orozco. It's just going to be a draw to Furch. He's going to get a couple of yards before he gets brought down. I mean, that's that's basically just, I mean, that's just a give up play in many respects. And Grapevine is going to call timeout here with a minute 13 to go. It's their first time out of the half as they're going to save a little time for their offense. So. A minute 13 to go. It's 21-0 Grapevine. You're listening to Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. 
Hey, Mustang fans, have you been meaning to get to the dentist and it just keeps getting pushed back to the list for tomorrow? Well, today, let me introduce you to Dr. Chip Mercer and Filter Park Dental, where they're creating and restoring beautiful smiles. They're a full-service dental office that provides everything from your basic dental cleanings to more advanced care like implants and Invisalign orthodontics. Online at FilterParkDental.com or call 817-275-4817 for an appointment. Conveniently located in North Arlington, Dr. Mercer's a proud Mustang dad. FilterParkDental.com or call 817 do you feel your home is too humid and slightly musty? Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith back here with you at Mustang Panther Stadium where the Mustangs lead the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets by a score of 21 to nothing. A minute 13 to go here in the first half and the Mustangs are about to get the ball back with two timeouts left as they are uh, as we're about to have a punt right now. The defense for the Mustangs is staying on the field just in case of a fake. Well, that's Parker Polk there at the 43-yard line. Right. He's basically playing like a safety right now. He's watching for a fake. Snap is back. This kick is up, and they're willing to let it go over the head. I think that was just that was just the, the grapevine coaches wanting to defend against any kind of a possible fake right there. So they had Parker up about 15 yards off the line as like a safety. Everyone else was basically playing defense. You can see on the replay here how four guys dropped back yep. on that. That was just that that was a just in case they try something. They know that uh, the punter Chavola doesn't have a big leg, so they didn't think they'd lose a lot on field position, right. which they didn't. The punt was down at the 20-yard line, so the Mustangs have it. A minute six to go. The Mustangs are going to try and tack on some points here. They have two timeouts to play with. First and 10 from the 20. Bomb in the shotgun with Polk offset to his left. Carradine comes in motion. It is a handoff to Polk up the middle and just nothing there as they as he was met by Henry Mankin once again right in the hole at the line of scrimmage. No gain on first down. And now Graybine, I think, is going to let the clock run. I think they were trying to see if you know, maybe they could pop something. They, they might use, use their timeouts. Typically in that situation, you're going to see what your first two plays give you, one to two plays to decide how you're going to try to construct that drive. And I think you're right. They, they looked at the first play and decided that wasn't enough. So we're going to go ahead and let uh, let this clock run out. Well, take, a, and take a three touchdown lead into the half. Take a three touchdown lead into the half and knowing you have the ball to start the third quarter as well. Second and 10 at the 20. Wagner comes in motion from the left to the right. Another handoff up the middle. Polk has some room this time up out past the 30 to the 31. So that'll stop the clock for the moment as they move the chains. 16 seconds left in the half, but I don't think Coach no, Alexander's going to stop this clock. They asked Coach, did he want a timeout? He shook his head no. Let's just get out of here and go make our adjustments and so we can come out and finish this game. So a fantastic first half by the Grapevine Mustangs. They score on, this will count as a drive, but they score touchdowns on three of their five drives. They shut out the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets in the first half, and they go to the locker room with a 21 to nothing lead in this battle for the 4-5-A-2 di District Championship. When we come back, we will have the halftime show for you. It, will, it is the Prosperity Bank halftime show, and what we will have is we will I'll play for you my pregame interview that I did with Grapevine head coach Mike Alexander. The Arlington Heights band, I'm sure, may perform for us. The Grapevine band is not here tonight, Due to the weather, I think once this game got really delayed, they decided to call it a night. You can't really blame them for that. So we'll go take it to the half. It is 21 to nothing, Grapevine. This is Grapevine Mustangs football presented by the Grapevine Mustang Football Booster Club on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Do you feel your home is too humid and slightly musty? Do you have that room or side of the house you don't use because it's too hot or too cold? Do you have family members struggling with health issues or allergies? Then contact Energy Attic and transform your living spaces by transforming your attic. Energy Attic uses a three-part energy reduction system to make your home or office as comfortable and energy efficient as possible, saving you money, reducing your carbon footprint, and improving indoor air quality. Who doesn't want to save money, breathe cleaner air, and sleep better? Energy Attic helps improve your home climate control, reduce Reduces those cold and hot pockets, makes it more comfortable throughout, and saves you up to 40% on your energy bill. It's fast and easy to schedule your free Energy Attic audit. Simply visit energyattic.com and fill out the form. Virtual appointments are available as well. Now is the time to get your project started. So let Energy Attic show you how much you can love the comfort of your home. Energyattic.com. Attic solutions to transform your life. I'm Kevin Hannigan, president of Prosperity Bank. 
We live by our promise to provide banking services our customers need with the excellent customer service they deserve today and into the future. That's our Prosperity Bank promise. Living in North Texas provides all of us with an amazing quality of life, including an affordable cost of living, outstanding schools, unbelievable cultural opportunities, and the best sports around. But we also have to put up with severe storms. Hi folks, Champion Sports Radio president and founder Thomas Lee here to tell you when a hail or windstorm comes through your neighborhood, do what we did and call Greenleaf Roofing. Greenleaf Roofing is a fully insured, locally owned and operated company built on the values of amazing craftsmanship, affordable options and innovative solutions. And they are proud that those values still stand as a foundation for their business today. And did I mention Greenleaf Roofing has 24 hour emergency service available? It's nice to know Greenleaf Roofing will be there in a hurry if you need them. After the first experience, I became a customer for life and have used them on three different homes. But don't just take my word for it. Learn about the Greenleaf Roofing difference yourself by calling them at 972-379-9109 or go online to greenleaf-roofing.com to find out how you can get your free quote. Greenleaf Roofing, the number one choice for all your roofing needs. Snap back, speed option. Pitch is on the ground, but it's picked up by Carradine, and he just keeps going forward inside the 10. Oh, and he walks it into the corral. Ridiculous runs from Rondo Carradine. Snap back, play action, going to his right. Pass is thrown out in the flat and caught, but nowhere to go. It's going to be by Caden Cliff. Snap back on second down. Hand off, hook in the middle, and he's got room inside the 30, the 20. First and two, first and goal with the five. Watkins and Polk in the backfield. Polk up the middle, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Shotgun pass back this time for Bob. He's going to take a shot up the sideline. That pass is caught. One and Chris. Hunter, Hunter. Down at six at the 10 yard line. Snap is back. It's a handoff. No, it's kept by Bob. Inside the 10, inside the five. And he's brought down, but he's going to have a first down. Snap back. A little option pitch. Carradine has it inside the 30, and he is going to oh, he's going to just oh, get brought down. I thought he was going to bust that one all the way. But a Wyatt defender got a piece of jersey. First and 10, Carradine coming in motion this time on first down. Hand off to Paul Blair on the left side, inside the five, and into the corral for the touchdown. Third score of the night for Matkins. One around the right to the left side. He is going to get nowhere. He's actually going to get dropped for a loss. As Tyler Mears along with another hurt behind ball. Speed option, pitch to Carradine, makes the pitch, gets the corner inside the 30, and he is going to walk this into the corral for a touchdown. Beautifully executed speed option that time. Carradine took it, had a gap, and just turned on the Jets. Five, he's going to be stopped for. And the team to the end zone for the touchdown. This is Jacob Dedamore back here on the ER of Texas pregame show. Grapevine head coach Mike Alexander is joining me right now. And coach, you guys really came out with a purpose against uh, Wyatt on Thursday night last week, jumped on the Murley, and then really just did a good job holding the the uh, Wyatt Chaparral's off throughout the rest of the game. What were your thoughts after looking things over last week? Um, yeah, thanks, Jacob. It was a uh, it was a clean game. We had zero penalties on offense. Um, we, uh, you know, never, never punted with our, with our ones, you know, uh, came close early. The first drive, we, uh, we had to, we had to convert a fourth down and then went ahead and went in and scored. But I thought it was a, uh, you know, kind of a business-like approach to the game. It wasn't real flashy at times. And then other times, you know, we did offensively get the ball pitched for, for the first time in a couple of weeks, you know, um, Teams are starting to to do things to try to discourage us getting the ball on the perimeter. You know, um, you know, Southwest 
did a really good job of it. Odie Wyatt attempted to. Um, now we're we're offensively now in that mode of trying to figure out ways to to take what people are doing and still get get our get our offense going. Um, but I was pleased with our guys, you know. And defensively, we tackled well again for the most part. Um, it's our third week back in our base defense, so uh, it's look, looking looking good. Things are teams definitely improving at the right time, I believe. You know, one player on the offensive side of the ball who has really stepped up from late, he's doing it uh, both on the ground and through the air, has been Rondell Carradine. You know, he's now leading the team in receiving, but on Thursday night, he was doing it with the ground game, made a couple of just ridiculously athletic plays uh, to get a, a big gain on one and then to get a touchdown with another play. What has been your thought on how Rondell has come along this year? Well, you know, we, we knew back in the spring – that that we needed to figure out ways to get the ball pitched to Rondell just because he's I mean he's the fastest he's the fastest athlete that we have um most games will go into it where him he being the fastest athlete on the field you know um he, he runs like a 10 500 meter dash I mean he's he can roll so we knew we got to get we knew we need to get the ball to him on the perimeter we made a we made we've made some efforts to do that, especially last week. Um, yeah, he's he's uh, he's scary when he gets the ball pitched, and then the guys in front of him are are executing and getting the guys blocked where they need to. So we just got to keep that rolling. Now we've got the big game, obviously tonight against Arlington Heights, which for all intents and purposes is for the district title. Uh, with them coming in undefeated, you guys coming in undefeated in district play, and it's going to be two similar styles clashing both teams maybe in different ways but both teams really want to pound the rock and run the ball when you're playing a team that has a similar philosophy as you especially offensively does that make preparation from a defensive standpoint maybe somewhat easier um it, it could you know depending on how you structure your practice and how much good on good you do throughout the week and and we do we do a fair amount of it uh, i think uh I think we're we're similar in the in the statistical categories, but I would say extremely different in how our approach is with it. You know, they're they're way more what we call gap and man scheme blocking schemes, which we're not as much. We're you know our our bread and butter is more of a zone scheme, so it's kind of hard to get that to translate over when you're doing your good on good stuff. Uh, but the but the whole idea or, you know, ideology behind what we do is the same, you know, stay out of uh, unfavorable downs, you know, keep, keep the, keep the chains manageable. Um, and, you know, we're lean on your, lean on your better players to go make plays. And, and uh, ours have proven to be our running backs for most of the year. And then uh, theirs have too. So it'll be interesting, you know, um, stats are pretty, uh, pretty comparable, you know, now, defensively, they are a team that, at least the way the numbers look, look like they're a very aggressive attacking defense. They're averaging, I think, about two sacks and two turnovers per game on the defensive side, and it's spread out amongst really their entire front seven specifically. Uh, when you look at them on film, what do you see from that Yellow Jacket squad and what they might try to do to you tonight? Yeah, you know, they, they have an undersized defensive line similar to our guys to, to, to some degree. And uh, so they try and compensate that with uh, just a lot of chaos, you know. Um, they're going to have a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, uh, giving a lot of different looks, bringing people off the edge, bringing linebackers through gaps and, and – um, you know, it's hard to hard to when you game plan it. It's hard to find a rhyme or reason of when they're doing it, why they're doing what they're doing. I think they're just basically doing it out of necessity. Uh, um, so we're gonna have they're gonna guess right at times. You know, I mean, there's 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 no doubt they're gonna have a negative player. You know, on us here or there. Um, but I think because of what they do, they also are susceptible for us to to gash them pretty good at times, you know, in our, in our run game. So um, it's going to be interesting. We're going to have to be patient, you know, uh, keep running the ball because like I said, any given play, if they, if they get out of their, if they get out of their gap, you know, which they very well could, the way they blitz, 
um, we could we could catch them and, and hit a big one. All right, Coach. I know we're all looking forward to calling it. I know you're looking forward to playing it. So thank you very much for your time as always, and great luck tonight. All right. Thanks, Jacob. That is Grapevine head coach Mike Alexander. We'll be back with more of the ER of Texas pregame show. You're watching Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Last thing you want to do is wait. So come see us. We have short and almost never have wait times at all. We have great staff, friendly physicians, and nurses and techs and they will take care of you and be thorough and give you the attention that you deserve and get you back on your feet. Welcome back to the Prosperity Bank Halftime Show. Jacob Dedimore here along with Tim Smith. Your halftime score, the Grapevine Mustangs leading the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets by a score of 21 to nothing. It is a shortened halftime as the game started an hour late, just over an hour late because of all the weather in the Metroplex. And that's why we kind of have a sparse crowd here tonight as well. Here is uh, what, coming into this game tonight, is something we, was, we were going to talk about in the pregame. We, talked about, we were talking about, we mentioned at the beginning how these two teams, they go about it a little a different way, but they both have a similar philosophy. They want to break you down running the football, and both these teams have been very good at it this season. Both teams coming into tonight averaging over 300 yards rushing per game. Um, you know, Both uh, we have a leading rusher, a bell cow leading rusher that carries the load. Uh, Brian Furch is that for Arlington Heights. Obviously, Parker Polk is that for Grapevine that are both great. The difference between the two teams offensively is that Grapevine is much more efficient when they pass the ball, and we've seen examples of that tonight, Tim. We sure have, and when we talk about those screens and those little play actions, Evan Baum is very good and very accurate, and uh, again, a very high percentage. I mean, Evan Baum's boasting a 133.5 QBR, while uh, the quarterback, Eric Velasco, there is a 76.3, so you can see the huge difference in the passing numbers when Arlington Heights has had to go to a pass game tonight. They have not been successful where Grapevine has been. Yeah, and speaking of that, Evan Baum tonight, while he only has 57 yards passing, they've come when Grapevine wanted to throw the ball, catching Heights off guard, and he is 3-for-3 three three perfect uh, passing tonight for 57 yards, but it has been the ground game for Grapevine that has taking control. Parker Polk in that first half, 14 carries for 119 yards and two scores. Rondell Carradine uh, contributed a touchdown. That was actually a bubble screen on, no, that was a speed option on his touchdown, and he had the touchdown run. Uh, Reed Watkins is averaging over nine yards a carry, three carries for 28 yards. The Arlington Heights run game has had some success tonight. Brian Furch had a solid first half, 74 yards on only nine carries. Uh, Eric Orozco, the quarterback, 28 yards on four carries. The problem for Heights uh, has when they've gotten the ball into Grapevine territory, they suddenly they get a negative play and get behind the chains, and their offense just isn't designed to overcome those kind of uh, th those negative plays, especially on first down when it sets them into long yardage situations. Any offense is going to have an issue when you get behind the chains and you have second and long and third and long. And particularly an offense that doesn't throw the ball very well. They went empty the one time. They lost a bunch of yards with a backwards pass because the, the quarterback did not have anybody blocking for him in the backfield. And you're right. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to try to run the ball. When they get out of that, that's going to cause opportunities for Grapevine. They do have the one turnover tonight. Uh, we've seen them create turnovers all season while not turning the ball over very often. So Grapevine is certainly... Uh, everything is going the way they would have wanted it to go if they were to script this thing out, especially after the rain delay. Everything's been on their side, momentum, all that. We'll see how they can come out and keep that momentum in the third quarter. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break here on the Prosperity Bank Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll have the start of the second half for you. This is Great Bond Mustangs Football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. I'm Kevin Hannigan, president of Prosperity Bank. We live by our promise to provide banking services our customers need with the excellent customer service they deserve, today and into the future. That's our Prosperity Bank promise. At 121, we love our Mustang football and we also love our students. We're so excited for an opportunity to come alongside parents and schools as we shape the next generation of leaders. 
and we love to welcome you and your whole family on a Sunday morning and your students to join us on a Wednesday night. Our students have fun while learning to love God through His Word and also love others through selfless service. All right, enough about what we can do for you. Let's get back to the game. Go Mustangs! Hey guys, this is Jose with Infinity Solar. Today we're out here in McKinney, Texas. 48 panels, 18.24 kilowatts, which yearly they're gonna get a total production of 20,664 kilowatts. That's more, more production than they need, so the electrical company will be able to give them credit for some of that energy that they're gonna be saving. Today we have the SilFab panel. It's a US manufacturer, it comes with a 30 year warranty, some of the best warranty in the industry right now. A job this size usually takes companies two days to complete. We're gonna knock it out in one day. So that works great for our customers. That way they don't have to worry about taking two days off from work. They just have to take one day, maybe even half a day after the job. So we'll get this customer up and going, ready for the city inspection and get them up and going with their system. Alberto Chavola lining up to kick it off, a high hang time on the kick, and it's going to be a reverse to Carradine on the kickoff. Or excuse me, C.J. Holmes up to the 25, the 30, still on his feet, and finally get brought down at the 32-yard line that time. Polk and C.J. Holmes, they faked that reverse a few times this year, and I think the last time we actually saw him run it was in the season opener against uh, Wakeland High School out of Frisco, and that time, it's a pretty solid kickoff, ends up going for about 25 yards out to the 32. Yeah, they have two dynamic players back there to return that kick. Either one of them can get great yards and break it for a big one. So I like that play. I like the reverse. I like that they got some positive yards off of it. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 32. First possession of the second half. Mustangs lead 21-0. It is the diamond formation, the diamond pistol formation. Snap back. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to Victor Delacruz. First time we've seen him get a little action in a few weeks as Delacruz is in there on first down, gets a couple of yards, going to give him a total of three. Now to check that two out to the 34. The yeah, senior just running back. Good play, good stuff up by that defense from Arlington Heights. They came out, they played good gap control that time. There was a little counter, but they, everyone sat in their gap and they made the good play there. Victor Delacruz came into tonight with 154 yards on 30 carries this season, averaging just over five yards a carry. Second and eight now at the 34. This time they go with just a single back out of the pistol. Two wide receivers to the right, two tight ends, both lined up on the right side of the formation. Snap back, handoff up the middle. Parker Polk takes it, gets across the 40. They're going to call him down at the 40. Gain of six yards, sets up a third and short, third and two. That time they went against, away from the power of the formation that time and found some room on the back side. Yeah, the linebacker number 16, Alberto Chavala. Is that right? He he blitzed off that left side, which creates the bubble off the or off the defensive left, creates a bubble on your right side, which is where Grapevine took advantage. Good read by Evan Baum. Good play by Grapevine. They had the perfect play call for that defense. Third and two now for the Mustangs at their own 40. Two backs behind Evan Baum in an offset pistol formation. Shifting from the left to the right is Polk. Up the middle, he's going to move the chains out across the 45 to the 47. That time just following the big body of number 72, Braden Johnson, who pulled into the hole and led the way for a gain of seven yards and a first down. Braden Johnson has been a catalyst. He plays that left guard position, but he has had a few pancakes, two pancakes on each touchdown run tonight so far. And now he's out leading the run on, on a big play once again, and he's getting the job done. You know, Braden Johnson stepped into the starting lineup a couple of weeks ago for the injured Alex Holgan, and he's played so well the last couple of the weeks that the coaching staff has left him out there. If it's not broke, don't fix it. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 47, just under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Hank Miller moves from the right to the left as the H back. Parker Polk, no, nope. Evan Baum gets it. And the ball's on the turf, and it's a fumble, and it's recovered by Arlington Heights. Baum pulled the, the ball out of Parker Polk's gut on the speed option, and he got popped that time by number 10, the junior linebacker, Kellen Petrie, and knocked the ball out of Evan Baum's hands, and it's the first turnover of the night for the Mustangs. One thing about this attacking defense, it can be tough on a quarterback when, when they're making their reads on these options of keep the ball, hand off the ball, who's coming, who's not, and that time he gets confused. He makes a bad read, and he pays the price for it. Yeah, and he didn't have that ball tucked away because he's running an option play, so he has to have it a little loose 
And when he got popped by Petrie, that ball just came right out. First and 10 for Heights at the Grapevine 48. Hand off to Brian Furch up the middle, dancing around, finds some room on the left side, and gets about three yards into the 45-yard line. So nice, strong run by Furch, just kind of dancing his way through for a three-yard game. Yeah, perfect script right now for Arlington Heights. You come out and you get the big stop. As you come out of halftime, I always say as a coach, the third quarter, the first third quarter drive is the most important drive of the game. And this proves to be huge for Arlington Heights right now. First turnover of the game. They averaged two turnovers a game coming into tonight with this attacking defense, and they get their first one. Second and seven at the Grapevine 45-yard line. This time they come out. Only one back, three wide. It's going to be a keep by Orozco. He gets around the left side. Flag is down. I saw the hold myself, even from way up here in the press box with no binoculars. It was right at the point of attack off left tackle. I believe that time it was number 97, Vili Motamanu, who was getting held trying to get out to Orozco. So that's going to bring this run back and take it 10 yards back into uh, Arlington Heights territory. Yeah, just, I mean, you, he got his arms there around the number 94 did. He put him into a little bear hug and then didn't let him go when he tried to disengage. You're going to get called for that every time. That was actually number 41, Dalton Knapp, who was trying to get away and get out to Orozco. And just like you said, the offensive lineman, I believe that was actually, the left tackle. Actually, it was tackle. 84, the tight end. It was Micah Powell. Okay, Micah Powell, yeah the, yeah. the tight end, Micah Powell, just didn't let him go when he tried to release. Ten-yard penalty back to the Arlington Heights, 45, second and 17. This time a little reverse this time, and it is stopped cold by C.J. Holmes, the backside corner who stayed at home and dropped the wide receiver, Tymere Bisco, for a loss of four yards. That's just, once again, great coaching on the grapevine, uh, the, the side of the grapevine Mustangs. They've always got their kids prepared. You keep your corner to stay home. You teach them to stay home on those plays that go away from you. He does a great job and is able to sit there and make that tackle on the reverse. Just a great job by C.J. Holmes that time. Stayed with his assignment, didn't follow the play, no. stayed on his backside. High football IQ. Yep. Loss of four, third and forever now. Orozco's going to keep it on a quarterback draw. He's going to get a few yards out to about the 45-yard line, but well short of the first down, and that's going to force a great by punt. The sudden change defense of the Mustangs comes through. Exactly what we talked about at the break, right? You keep... Uh, Arlington Heights, if you continue to get behind the change, which, which they did with that big holding call, their offense is not built for that, and Grapevine's defense is taking advantage every single time. That was the fourth penalty of the ball game on Heights. Not a lot, but Grapevine had zero in the first half, and that one right there was a massive penalty and essentially killed the drive. Chavola back for another punt. Parker Polk back at his own 20 to receive it. Snap back. Chavola gets it away barely, almost blocked. Parker Polk's going to catch it, make the fair catch call at the 24-yard line, which is where the Mustangs will take over. 7.13 to go here in the third quarter, and now the – oh, we had some after-play stuff back here where the punt happened, and we may have a personal foul here. We'll see what the call is. We'll take a break and give you the call when we come back. You're listening to and watching Great by Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Lean in to the values that got you here. They don't change, no matter the storm, no matter the trouble. When the time comes to sell your vehicle, we'll buy it for full market value, not a penny less. That's pricing true to Texas. It's the right way. This is Texas. This is classic. True market value for your vehicle. Classic Chevrolet. Relax and enjoy the difference. So I think one of the most important parts of dentistry is the patient education and the emphasis on preventive care. And I think our office, along with all of our hygienists, do a really great job in the patient care and patient education. We can fix problems all day long, but if the patient doesn't know what's causing those problems, then we're not giving them the tools to fix them. And so that's one of our main goals here at Field Park. Jacob Dedamore and Tim Smith back here with you at Mustang Panther Stadium in Grapevine. The penalty after the punt was a personal foul. We believe it was on Tyler Mears, number 33, back where the punt happened. So half the distance to the goal after the fair catch puts the ball at the Grapevine 12, first and 10, where the Mustangs take over. They go two receivers to the left on first down. 
Snap back to Baum. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to Polk. Got room. Out to past the 15, near the 20. See where they mark him down. They're going to mark him down at the 18-yard line. So it'll be a gain of six on first down for Polk. So it's interesting. Tyler Mears having a great game tonight, but we're told up here in the booth that tomorrow, because of that infraction, there will be a circle of trust created by the team, and he will be in the center of that doing push-ups. So I'm sure he's looking forward to getting up tomorrow and getting those push-ups in in front of his teammates. The whole I'm team sorry, will the be, whole team will is be gonna taking do push-ups. push-ups for him. So everyone's going to get huge tomorrow because of that penalty. <laughs> Second and fourth, the 18, Diamond Pistol, handoff up the middle. Room for Demontra's Dunn, who gets his first carry of the night, and he'll move the chains out past the 25 to the 27-yard line. A gain of nine yards for Dunn. Again, his first carry of the game. 226 yards on 30 carries and two touchdowns coming into tonight. Another one of those unsung heroes that are in the running back room. They run back, they have about four or five guys that can carry the ball on any sort of consistent basis. And, and they all get uh, good yards and do good, good work when they get on the field. First and 10 at the 27, 6.08 to go here in the third quarter. Offset running backs out of the shotgun. Handoff, Reed Watkins going around the right side. Piles just kind of moving forward across the 30. And still all the way out to the 35 and near the 40 as Reed Watkins just kept going and got all the way out to the 39-yard line for a 12-yard gain. Reed Watkins just driving the pile forward. Somebody call Kyle Bryant at NFL Network. That's what we call him, angry run, son. Great job. You deserve a scepter. And I'm going to try to submit that to the NFL Network for next Tuesday segment. He just kept his feet going while Arlington Heights players are trying to rip the ball out of his hands. He had two hands on it, kept a hold of it, and just kept going. Number nine, the starting linebacker, Roy Wright, who leads this team in turnovers and sacks that time, was trying to cause another one. First and 10 at the 39-yard line for the Mustangs, and now a timeout is called by Grapevine coaches as they saw something they didn't like out there on first down. We'll take it with them. 5.23 to go here in the third quarter. Mustangs lead 21-0. This is Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Lean in to the values that got you here. They don't change no matter the storm, no matter the trouble. When the time comes to sell your vehicle, We'll buy it for full market value, not a penny less. That's pricing true to Texas. It's the right way. This is Texas. This is classic. True market value for your vehicle. Classic Chevrolet. Relax and enjoy the difference. After the timeout, the Mustangs have the ball first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. Mustangs leading in this battle for the district title, 21 to nothing. Pistol formation on first down, three wide set. Snap back, handoff up the middle. Dancing up the middle is Polk out across the 40 to the 46, a gain of seven yards. I'm telling you, those sweet feet of Parker Polk, he just finds a little bit of a gap and just dances his way through, and he is so hard to bring down. Throwing the Parker Polka in the middle of the line there is what my uh, professional wife dancer would say. But I'll tell you the difference between this game tonight, Grapevine staying ahead of the chains while Arlington Heights has consistently been behind the chains. Absolutely. Second and three for the Mustangs at their own 46-yard line, this time with an offset pistol with two running backs. Brady Wagner in as the H-back moves to the right side of the formation. Snap back. It is a handoff. Nope. Yeah, it is a handoff. Sorry, I keep getting fooled. Baum is really good at that fake. That time he did hand it off, but it ends up being a loss of a yard that time to Parker Polk, who was the up back. And another negative play for that Heights defense. Now it's going to set up a third and four. No chance to dance there. Parker Polka was shut down a little bit that time. Just a real good job by the linebackers to get in there and create no really extra space. Well, on that time, big number 85, Omar Ramirez just stuffed everything right at the line of scrimmage. Third down, Evan Baum back to throw. He's looking to his right. He throws the ball, but it comes in low, and it's incomplete. He had a man open. Brady Wagner was wide open by himself, standing right on the side in front of the Arlington Heights bench on the sideline across midfield, and Baum just didn't see him. Well, Caden Cook had bopped open on a corner route as, as well, which was a touchdown, and again, he didn't see it, didn't feel comfortable making the throw, and that's a shame because they really missed an opportunity there, Jacob. Yeah, but it bombed that time, incomplete pass. He tried to hit Carradine late coming across the field and just came in low. Fourth down, first punt of the game for Grapevine. 
Leighton Towery booms this one kind of off the side of his foot and out of bounds. That's not going to get a lot of distance here. We'll see where they mark it. It's going to be outside the 30-yard line of heights. It's going to be a pretty short punt. They mark it right at the 30, so it's a 26-yard punt for Leighton Towery. And the Grapevine defense is now back on the field. Arlington Heights defense that we expected to see coming into this one has woken up. They obviously had a little lull. I think they fell asleep during the rain delay. And maybe Grapevine had a little bit of an advantage. They were able to go to their feed, field house, put their feet up, relax. Now this defense has come out in the second half, and they've really put up a barrier. A fumble on the first possession for Grapevine. Now they, after getting the ball to midfield, are forced to punt. Heights takes over their own 29, first and 10. Two receivers to the right, snap back, handoff up the middle. Room to run out across the 35 and near the 40-yard line. That's uh, Brian Furch, the leading rusher for this team. Nine-yard gain on first down out to the 38-yard line. Yeah, Hunter Lasher coming in and making a big hit at the end of that run to make sure he wasn't going to be able to break free for a touchdown. So good job by Hunter to come over and help out. You can't have a running game like Heights has without a big offensive line. Number 79, Braylon Stewart, the senior at left tackle, left guard, junior. Number 66, Ben Campos, the center. Number 55, Jesse Guyton, the junior. Right guard, number 75, Gabe McClellan, the senior. And Luis Ortega, the junior, number 50, at right tackle, is on second down. They hand the ball up to Furch again right up the gut. Didn't need much to get the first down. Didn't get much, but got what he needed to move the chains. And just on cue, what you said, big number 74, he comes around in a pull action. He gets deep on Leighton Way. Leighton just not able to get off. That's about a 100-pound probably difference that Leighton's trying to work through there. So... Good play design to get that first down by our own And you can see the Yellow Jackets, that offensive line, they've got some size to them. First and 10 at their own 40-yard line, just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Snap back to Orozco, straight quarterback draw, gets across the line, but not much more than that as Latham Way met him right in the hole, fell forward for a yard, but that's all he gets. Yeah, Tyler Mears had really good penetration. He was able to get an arm out and slow it down a little bit. And then at Latham Way, no one got up on him that time, and he's free to make that tackle. Great job by Latham Way, who, again, as a senior, has been all over the field knowing what this game means tonight. Second and nine now for the Yellow Jackets as they look to the sideline to get the signal. They're going to come out in a three-wide set this time, checking into the game at wide receivers number 80, Holden Hernandez as the third wide receiver. Running back offset to the right side, it's Birch. Play action, Roscoe rolling to his right, and he fires one out, it's caught near midfield. Number eight, Anthony Lara with his first catch of the night. Steps out of bounds at the 49, a yard short of the first down. Best throw we've seen tonight from Orozco in limited passing attempts. Nice little called quarterback waggle right there. Rolls to his right and fires a strike. Yeah, you boot him out to get him away from that pass rush. You run a little out route from your slot receiver. Easy pitch and catch that time for Owen tonight. Really good route by Anthony Lara that time as well. Sets up a third and one for the Yellow Jackets at their own 49-yard line. And now everybody jumps the snap. Little, little miscommunication between the quarterback and center that time. Everybody but the center moved up front. That puts you from third and short to third and medium, not where they want to be, but certainly not where they have been earlier in this game with their third and longs, but now you need six yards to get that first down. Definitely changes your play call here now that you're third and six. And because of that, they're going to come out in a three-wide set with Birch as the only tailback. Offset to the right side of Orozco. I'd look for some kind of a rollout or boot out to the left side here to get to the wide side of the field. And sure enough, there goes his running back as a lead blocker, I would imagine. Third and six, Orozco rolling to his right. Little waggle throw, the pass is caught. First down by Bisco across midfield and out of bounds. Basically the same play they ran before, just to the other side. And that time you noticed, you, you said they moved Furch over almost like a lead blocker, and he was basically a lead protector yeah. as they rolled the pocket to the left side. Yeah, there's no, that is not a play designed for the quarterback to run. It's designed for him to throw. You've got the tight end and running back staying in the block and protect extra for him. And again, creating an easy pitch and catch for the first down. Gain of eight yards that time for Bisco. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Snap is back, handoff to Birch up the middle. And he's dropped right across the line of scrimmage. Drew, Drew Nelson. Nelson coming up from his safety position and got and came up hard and hit Birch right at the line and dropped him for no gain. Drew Nelson, he's been sick all day with the stomach bug, but he, he comes up, he's on the line, he's going to blitz, he doesn't hide it, and then he reacts very quickly to the handoff and is able to make that easy tackle right at the line of scrimmage. 
Second and 10 now after the stop by Nelson. A minute 10 to go here in the third quarter. Mustang still leading 21 to nothing. Shotgun snap back to Orozco. Play action. Rolls to his right. Does Orozco. He's got room. He throws the ball out of bounds. I'm really surprised he threw that ball and didn't run. He had running room here on the near sideline. Could have gotten a good five to five yards at least, if not more. But instead just threw it over everybody's head because that time, time here, Bisco was blanketed. Well, that time, instead of being in a man uh, defense, Grapevine drops off into a zone. Now they had that out route covered underneath and over the top. Just nowhere to go with the ball. He could have run, but not a bad decision to throw it away. I'm not sure if he's really a runner like that. Well, I mean, he's I mean he, he came has taken the, off a little bit. He's third year, on this team in, in rushing this year, averaging 6.3 yards a carry and eight touchdowns. I mean, we've seen him run strong. I don't know why he didn't that time. Third and ten now. Snap is back. Play action. Roscoe. He's going to throw one deep over the middle. Has a man. It's caught inside the 25. Down to the 20 is Tymir Bisco. He found a spot out of the slot. Ran a like a corner route in the slot out of the zone or out of, out of the slot and found a corner route on the far side and found a gap and a great throw by Orozco to get down inside their deepest penetration of the ball game at the Grapevine 21. Well, it sure was a great play. They got away, I think, with a little bit of a hold on the left side. They almost got there and got the sack, but he's able to get that pass away. Perfect throw. 27 yards on the catch. Furch takes the ball on first down, gets rearing room inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds. We'll see where they, he stepped out. He's going to step out right at the 10. It's a gain of 11 yards and a first down. First and goal for the Yellow Jackets. They are putting together their best drive of the ball game. Yeah, it took them three quarters, but they found a little bit of a formula now, and I think that formula is don't get penalties, don't fumble the ball, don't be behind the chains, and you're making your life a lot easier and playing within yourselves. First and goal at the Grapevine 10-yard line. Snap back to Orozco, hand off to Birch, and he's going to get stopped right at the line of scrimmage as he was met by multiple Mustang defenders including number 27, Drew Nelson, and trying to see his number 41. I think that was number 41, Dalton Knapp. Nope. Was not, yes, it was 41, Dalton Knapp as well, right there, and just stone Birch right at the line of scrimmage. Clock is counting down, and we are going to come to the end of the third quarter before they get a play off. I don't think Arlington Heights is going to snap it, and they will not. So that's going to do it for the third quarter. We, it was a scoreless third quarter. We go to the fourth quarter, 12 minutes to go to determine who gets the number one seed out of 4-5A and who clinches a share of the district title. It's 21-0 Grapevine. This quarter was brought to you by our friends at Bottle Cap Alley Ice House Grill. This is Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. here at Mustang Panther Stadium. The Grapevine Mustangs are 12 minutes away from clinching the number one seed in 4-5A Division II and clinching a share of the district championship. But right now, the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets are driving the ball. They have the ball at the Grapevine 10-yard line, second and goal, as they have put together a fantastic drive here to end the third quarter. Moving the ball from their own 30 down to the Grapevine 10. Snap back to Orozco, hand off to Birch. Dances across the line, gets met, and then just pushes his way forward for about a three-yard gain. Nice job of collapsing that hole once it opened up. That was Leighton Towery, the main man in on the stop that time. And now it's third and goal. This is, you would assume, absolutely assume this is four down territory for the Yellow Jackets here down 21 nothing. Absolutely. There's no reason that you would think anything else down. Three touchdowns, 11 minutes to go in this one. 
critical two plays here for they're Arlington gonna, Heights. They're going to come out in a three wide set with Burtz as the running back, snap back, play action. Rolling to his right as a Roscoe, he gets away, turns the corner, turns up field, flags come flying. We're gonna have a hold here on as the play was trying to be made behind the line of scrimmage. Two referees threw those flags, and this is going to back it up 10 yards. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a shame for Arlington Heights because the quarterback makes a really good athletic play in the backfield. He makes a man miss. He gets to the corner. He's almost in the end zone. And now they're where they don't want to be again, way behind at, the chains. But at the same time, that hold was right at the point of attack. You've got to think that maybe a Roscoe doesn't get to the corner if not for the holding Facts. penalty right there. I wasn't going to go that far with it, but you're absolutely it's, right. I'm just saying it's possible. So back it up 10 yards to the 17, and it's still third and goal now for the Yellow Jackets. Still two plays to get it into the end zone here. So we'll see what they come out with this time, and I think they're going to call a timeout and talk about this on the sideline. 11-16 to go in the ballgame. Grapevine leads 21-0. This is Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Third and 17, we're back here at Mustang Panther Stadium. Play action, no, it's a handoff around the right side. Birch gets, finds the corner, gets solid yards, almost down to the 10. Ends up getting about six yards to the 11 to set up fourth and goal as they come out, does Arlington Heights. And instead of, I guess, playing to tendency on third and long, they go against it and get a solid gain here on third. They sure did. You got to look to this now. I mean, on fourth down and 11, they haven't had no success converting these types of plays here tonight on third down. Fourth and goal, you know Grapevine is ready. This is a this is this is a great this is a great situation right here. I love watching these types of plays. Who's gonna step up? Fourth and goal for the Yellow Jackets at the Grapevine 11 yard line. Birch goes in motion to empty out the backfield. Orozco drops back, he gets pressured, throws it into the end zone, and it goes over everybody and incomplete. Great job that time. Drew Nelson, when he saw the running back go motion out to empty the backfield, he just blitzed off the corner and was right in the face of Orozco and made him get rid of it over everybody's head and out of the back of the end zone. And Grapevine gets a turnover on downs. Drew Nelson making a huge impact coming out of the half, coming into the second half. Maybe he went in and got himself a little, little bit more hydrated at halftime. I mean, we know he's feeling ill, but he is making his presence felt. First and 10 now for the Mustangs on their own 11. Coming out of the power pistol now. Wagner steps up, snap back, handoff up the middle. Pokes got room across the 20, the 25, and out to the 26 yard line. Again, a 15 yards on first down. <coughs> first down, excuse me. This quarter, the fourth quarter, brought to you by our friends at Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the difference. The Park were you, I'm sorry, did you have more advertising? No, you go right ahead, brother. Parker Polka in full effect that time as he danced his way for a big gain, and that's what we've been waiting to see from him in the second half. Parker had over 100 yards rushing in the first half and a couple of touchdowns. Popped a 15-yarder there, first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Two receivers to the right side, two tight ends in the game on first down. Snap back, handoff, poke again up the middle. This time breaks a tackle across the 30 to the 35 and out to the 37. He'll move the chains again with another 11-yard gain, just spinning out of the arms of a tackle attempt that time before he was finally brought down by the linebacker. Number 10, 
Kellen Petrie. Well, I think the, the Mustangs understand that this is the drive, right? This is the moment where you can really put this game away, and you can see it. There's a lot of urgency by every single, all 11 players out there for the offense the right now. The defense got the stop they needed to set up the possible put away, and now it's the offense's turn to complete it. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Hank Miller steps up as an H-back here out of the power pistol. Snap back. It's again Parker Polk. Got room up the middle, and there he goes to the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, and he is brought down by the, an ankle tackle inside the 10-yard line, nearly taking that one all the way to the house before he was finally chased down at the very end of the play. I believe that was number one, Keith Gidry, the free safety, who finally got him down from behind. But a huge run by Parker Polk. They bring him down at the 8-yard line. That is a 55-yard run for Parker Polk. Well, he may, he may be a great dancer. And may, he may have those sweet feet. But you know what else he has? Speed. And he showed that speed that time. Very seldom do we see Parker get caught from behind. First and goal at the 8. Snap back. Handoff. They're going to give it to Polk on first down, going around the left side that time. Not much room for him to run as he is brought down by Petrie, the linebacker, after only a gain of a yard. But that run, I believe, if the stats, once the stats get updated, is gonna put Parker over 200 yards for the night. Well, he's been simply outstanding, nothing short of what we expect. He's about 50 yards over his normal average. He is having himself a night. That was a 55-yard gallop from Parker Polk, and he was a shoestring tackle away from taking that into the end zone for his third touchdown of the night. Second and goal now at the seven yard line. Power set here, only one wide receiver carrying out to the right side. Snap back, hand off to Reed Watkins. He's inside the five and he is gonna take it into the end zone. Reed Watkins using that strength and spinning out of an arm tackle and takes it in for his first touchdown of the ball game. You know what song comes to mind there on that one is Pinball Wizard. The way he pinballed through there, he is a pinball wizard. And Rumble, young man Rumble, what a great job. He showed the angry run earlier tonight, and now he just bounces off defenders as he rolls into the end zone. And the Mustangs complete that touchdown drive. Ends up being an 89-yard touchdown drive after the defense gets a stop on fourth down deep in their own end of the field. Hayden Rhodes now on for the extra point, and the Mustangs are about to put this one away. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.48 to go in the ballgame. Mustangs lead 28 to nothing. This is Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. For 13 straight years, Forbes.com has named Prosperity as one of America's best banks. To Prosperity's customers and employees, thank you for helping us maintain this national distinction. Prosperity Bank, real bankers, not just a bank. Back here at Mustang Panther Stadium, Jacob Dedemore and Tim Smith here with you. The Mustangs. Just go on an 89-yard touchdown drive to really widen the gap here and for probably put this game away with 7.48 to go. They now lead 28 to nothing over Arlington Heights as Reed Watkins gets his first touchdown of the ball game. But that drive was all Parker Polk. Had a 15-yard run, an 11-yard run, and a 55-yard run to set him up first and goal. Line drive kick, kind of a miss hit there. Bounces back at the 10, picked up and returned up to the 15, the 20. Now dancing, it's Bisco this time. He's out past the 30, the 40, up to midfield and out of bounds at the Grapevine 45-yard line. Tymir Bisco that time on the return on the squib kick, picks it up, dances his way up the middle and then out to the outside, up the near sideline, and a great return that time of 45 yards out to the Grapevine 45. It sure was in the second big return of the night against Grapevine. Something that, uh, you know, every game, no matter what, you're going to want to look at film. They're going to want to look at that and see how they can close and, that and, down. And both of them were the same with the return man taking it, kind of going up and then just basically you know, finding either finding blocks or just finding ways to get all the way across the field before he finally turned the corner. Yep. You know, it wasn't that they got the point of attack right, wrong, but he was just able to dance his way around and get to the outside. 
And we know he's a special player. He he's is. He's a special Ty player. Bisco is the leading receiver on this team. A very good player. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets at the Grapevine 45-yard line. Snap is back. Hand off up the middle to Birch. He's got room inside the 35. Still going inside the 25. And the ball's out. And it's on the ground. The Grapevine dives on it. We'll see who comes up with it. It's a scrum now. But the ball was ripped out. And Grapevine comes up with the fumble. Let's see who comes up with it. This time, it's C.J. Holmes, number three, making the recovery. It was a great run by Brian Birch. Brian Furch, excuse me, he has gotten over 20 yards. He was inside the 25, and as the grapevine defenders come up, it was C.J. Holmes who actually ripped the ball out. Holmes came up and attacked the ball immediately and ripped the ball right out of Furch's hand and then recovered the fumble himself. Wow, he sure did. And that ball was touched by about four or five different players from both teams. And CJ able to make the huge play, making his presence felt. Again, another senior that understands what this means. Second turnover of the night for the Mustangs. They take over their own 16 after that fumble. Handoff up the middle. Parker Polk gets about three, maybe four yards before he's tripped up that time. They're going to mark him down. Oh, wow, they're saying his knee went down at the 17, so only a gain of one yard. C.J. Holmes, once again, not only stripped it, but recovered it on that defensive play. And it was a great run by Furch up to that point. Just Holmes just attacked the ball with both hands and just ripped it out of there. It was going to be about a 25-yard run by Furch. So, so far, Grapevine has won the time of possession. They have won the penalty. Uh, battle and they have won the turnover battle at this point and you understand why it's 28 to nothing. Second and nine. Polk with the handoff again up to the 20 before he gets stuck right there by number 97 Henry Mankins who just planted Parker Polk after Mankin hit him at the 20. They're going to give him credit to the 21 for a gain of four. Mankins has been all over the field tonight. He's certainly making a statement for himself and that was about the hardest hit we've seen Parker take all season. Yeah, he just got stoned by Mankin once he got met after the four-yard gain. Parker Polk tonight unofficially before this drive started with 225 yards rushing tonight on 23 carries. You know, we talked about Brian Furch. You know, Brian Furch has over 100 yards rushing tonight, but the young man unfortunately has had a fumble tonight, just had a fumble. Snap back, hand off to Polk, trying to find room to get that first down. He's not going to get there. That time, good job by the Heights defense of standing that play up. Parker Polk only able to get a couple of yards out to the 23, and the Mustangs are going to have to punt for the second time tonight. Yeah, I mean, you're third and medium. No reason to take any additional chances here, so hand the ball off, see if you can get the first down. If not, five minutes and counting, up four touchdowns. Not a lot of issues or worries if you're grapevine right now. Leighton Towery on to punt. This will be his third punt of the night. I believe that's Tymir Bisco who is back deep to receive the punt, but it's a short punt by Towery, and it's going to die right at about midfield. Only going to end up being about a 26-yard punt that time from Leighton Towery with no return. And Heights will take over at their own 49-yard line. So the Mustangs with only 5.20 to go here in the ball game, barring something very unforeseen, are on their way to clinching a share of the District 4-5A Division II title and also clinching the number one seed in the playoffs that start two weeks from two weeks from this weekend. And stay tuned. We understand there's going to be a trophy presentation after the game. We are hearing that the, that the winner of this game tonight was going to be presented with the, the gold football, as Coach Mike Alexander likes to call it, the district championship trophy. That would be two years in a row for Grapevine. We saw the excitement last year in the celebration. Pretty excited to see that again. And off up the middle on first down up to about the 46 of Grapevine. That was Brandon Monroe, the senior, with the carry. Going to get a gain of three to set up second and seven. This Arlington Heights team, you can see the toughness they play with and, and the, you know, the, the, the drive that they play with. They, they're a team that's going to be tough to deal with. Uh, I would expect them to at least win a game or two in the playoffs. Handoff on second down. Monroe again. He gets hit at the line and brought down. Just a great tackle that time as getting up underneath from the pile was Leighton Towery. He got around the legs of Monroe and just didn't let him go and dropped him after about a gain of two. Third and five now for the Yellow Jackets at the Grapevine 44. Under four and a half minutes to go here in the ballgame. Three wide set. 
Monroe in at tailback still. Snap back, play action. Orozco rolling to his right, looking for a man. Still looking. Now he throws it. The pass is caught by Bisco, and he's going to be, let's see where he stepped out. See where they mark him. It was, he, it's going to be a first down. They're going to say he stepped out right at the sticks. He came, did a good job. He came back to his quarterback who was looking for somebody to throw, and Bisco stopped right at the first down marker and made the catch to move the chains at the 39-yard line, a gain of five. First and ten now for Arlington Heights. Snap back. Play action, Orozco rolling, throwing, pass is caught inside the 30. First catch of the night by the tight end, Micah Powell, who actually came into tonight second on the team in receiving yards with 199 yards receiving. He was averaging a whopping 22 yards a catch coming into this game tonight as he only had seven receptions. Makes his first grab there for a gain of 11 and a first down. That was a great find secondary and pass rush has just done a tremendous job on passing downs tonight. Hand off up the middle and nowhere to go as Monroe is met in the hole and pushed back. It's going to be a loss of at least a yard, maybe two that time. As he just had, there was no hole for Monroe to go to and he just got absolutely stoned. Clock still running, down to 337 and counting. Second and 12 now for the Yellow Jackets. Snap back to Orozco, play action, rolls to his left, gets the ball out, pass is caught by Bisco, makes a man miss, gets inside the 20, still on his feet, down to the 15. Nice run after the catch by Tymir Bisco right there. Broke the tackle of Hunter Lasher, spinning out of it and getting all the way down to the 14 yard line for a gain of uh, 16 yards to move the chains and keep this drive going. Yeah, you wonder where this has been all night for Arlington Heights. Of course, Grapevine is slowed up. They're in a little bit of a softer zone, not taking too many chances. But if you're Arlington Heights, you have to wonder, where's our production been throughout most of the evening? Grapevine, yeah, right now I think you see Grapevine playing a bit of a keep it in front of you kind of defense. First and 10 at the 14-yard line, three minutes to go in the ballgame. Snap back, handoff to Furch. Sweep around the right side, inside the 10, inside the 5, and he's breaking tackles, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Brian Furch, great blocking all the way down the field on that sweep out of the split back shotgun set. Furch broke a couple of arm tackles and punched it in the end zone for the first score of the night for the Yellow Jackets. Just a great job by that offensive line of Arlington Heights to keep fighting, keep pushing, and then Burch. He, he's a baller. He wants to get in the end zone. He hasn't been there tonight. It's a matter of pride for this Arlington Heights team as they've been a good team all year. They have not experienced a loss this year. This will be their first one, and I like that they're fighting all the way until the end, knowing that they will have playoff games to play also. And the kick is up and good for the, Arlington Heights. The kick by Chavola, yeah, kicks up and good. And right now, a little bit of a worry. Major Heck is coming to the sideline. He injured, looked like his forearm or his wrist on that play, his right forearm or wrist, and he's coming to the sideline in some pain. And the field, the extra point is up and good. It makes it 28 to seven with 252 to go here in the ball game. But right now, a little bit of concern for Major Heck. Not sure if he got injured on that touchdown run by uh, Furch or not. May have gone up, took a shot on that wrist, trying to make the tackle. He's trying to shake it out as the trainers are talking to him over here on the sideline. But the first score of the game for the Heights, Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets makes it 28 to seven. Grapevine has the hands team out here now expecting the onside kick. CJ Holmes will be the only deep man. He's gonna stand at about the 20. They've got the two lines of defenders here, one at, the, one at just across midfield and the other one back at the 40. Now you don't wanna see any of these Grapevine, especially the, the top line, the first the starters getting hurt tonight. You know, you don't necessarily have to play all of your starters next week, but you want everyone healthy going into the playoffs. Chavola actually kicks a line drive over everyone, picked up by Holmes at about the 20, picking his way up the midfield at 45, and find, gets all the way, almost all the way out to midfield. Nice return by Holmes out of the 47, a 27-yard return off the little line drive kick. Chavola just trying to see if he can get, a, get some kind of a good bounce 
over the two lines of grapevine players just to see if something can happen. Didn't work out, and a good return by C.J. Holmes. An excellent return. C.J. Holmes is a tremendous athlete and can do it from offense, from defense, and special teams. And you got to love all these big-time players have been making big-time plays tonight in a big-time game. Grapevine going to be looking to run the clock out here on this possession. Still two timeouts for Heights if they want to use them. First and ten trips right on first down with Polk, the only running back in the backfield. CJ, excuse me, Rondell Carradine comes in motion, handoff to Polk. He's got room up the middle inside the fifth, across the 50, inside the 45, and down to the 40-yard line. Another 13-yard run for Parker Polk on first down. That should put him up near 250 yards on the night. Just having a huge game tonight is Parker Polk. Parker Polk is always going to be the catalyst. He's going to be the guy that sets the tone for this offense. He's done it all year. He did it last year. We're happy to see him as a senior have such a tremendous game tonight in a game that means so much to all the senior class. This team is on its way to getting that gold football. 208 and counting, first and 10 to 40. Staying in the three wide set, two to the right, one to the left. Another handoff to Polk. Nut, a lot of more room, a lot of more, a lot more room up the middle again inside the 35, down to the 33. It's another gain of seven yards for Parker. Parker Polk is so tremendous. He's doing the Parker Polka in the middle of that D-line. Nobody can really get their hands on him. He doesn't take a lot of clean shots because of how quick he is within the, within the tackle box. For a little guy at 175 pounds, too, he sometimes can really end those runs, right? And he delivers the punch except for a little bit earlier when we saw him take oh, yeah. his shot to the chest. Second and three now at the 33-yard line. Trips left this time. Carradine coming in motion. Again, Polk with the handoff. He'll get the first down inside the 25 and then brought down as once again, number 97, Henry Mankin, Mankin making yet another tackle. He That kid has, has had a big game tonight for Heights on defense. He sure has. Polk gets the ball down to the 37-yard line to move the chains. I mean, this Arlington Heights is a good football team. There's, you know, they ran into a few issues tonight that they necessarily aren't built for from an offensive perspective, but this defense is good. They just ran into a, a better team in Grapevine tonight. We're under a minute to go, 50 seconds and counting, and now the victory formation comes in. They're going to wait till it gets down to 40 seconds to snap it. Snap is back, kneel down, but they will have to run one. Nope, they won't. They're not going to start the play clock. We'll see if they might have to run one more play, but it, yeah, they might have to run one more, but maybe not. We'll see. It looks like the officials are going to let this run, and that's going to clinch it. The Grapevine Mustangs come in tonight. They wait out the weather delay. Game started about an hour late because of the thunderstorms in the area, but it was well worth the wait. As the Grapevine Mustangs came, Mustangs came out hard, they came out fast, jumped on Arlington Heights early with a 21-0 lead, and then just kept the, the Yellow Jackets at bay for the rest of the ball game, and they are going to clinch the number one seed in the playoffs out of District 4-5A Division II and a share of the district championship as they defeat the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets tonight by a final score of 28-7. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll bring, we'll bring you the Infinity Solar Post Game Show. We do believe there is going to be a trophy presentation on the field. You are watching Grapevine Mustangs football on Champion Sports Radio and Tradio. Do you feel your home is too humid and slightly musty? Do you have that room or side of the house you don't use because it's too hot or too cold? Do you have family members struggling with health issues or allergies? Then contact Energy Attic and transform your living spaces by transforming your attic. Energy Attic uses a three-part energy reduction system to make your home or office as comfortable and energy efficient as possible, saving you money, reducing your carbon footprint, and improving indoor air quality. Who doesn't want to save money, breathe cleaner air, and sleep better? Energy Attic helps improve your home climate control, reduce Reduces those cold and hot pockets, makes it more comfortable throughout, and saves you up to 40% on your energy bill. It's fast and easy to schedule your free Energy Attic audit. Simply visit energyattic.com and fill out the form. Virtual appointments are available as well. Now is the time to get your project started. So let Energy Attic show you how much you can love the comfort of your home. Energyattic.com. Attic solutions to transform your life. 
There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Come Whirly on. Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arch. Jacob Dedamore and Tim Smith back here at Mustang Panther Stadium in Grapevine where the Grapevine Mustangs clinched the share of the district title tonight in 4-5A Division II with a 28-7 win over the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets. They will be the number one seed in the playoffs which started two weeks. And right now you're seeing the celebration on the sideline in front of the crowd that did remain throughout the weather. And see the Mustangs celebrate. The, there's the gold football being presented to head coach Mike Alexander and the Grapevine Mustangs. And while they can clinch the outright district title next week, they are going to be at the very least co-district champions in 4-5A Division II as they go to 8-1 on the season, 6-0 and in district. The Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets fall to 8-1 and 5-1 and and in district play. And I tell you, man, what especially defensively against a very strong run game and offensive front, just a fantastic job by the Mustangs to come out tonight and really impose their will. Yeah, the Mustangs were on shutdown mode all night. They give they gave up a few big run plays, but by and large, I think the penalties by Arlington Heights putting them in bad positions, but then you had a couple of really good pressures and sacks and getting the quarterback to throw the ball out of bounds about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage at one point. I mean, this defense was all over the field. Guys like C.J. Holmes, you had Latham Way, you had uh, Drew Nelson, Hunter Lasher, Tyler Mears, guys just making plays all over the place from start to finish in this one. And the offense did what they had to do. They get that 21-point lead, and they put it on cruise control. And, you know, give credit to Arlington Heights. They didn't quit fighting at all. They came out and played actually a pretty strong second half in this ball game, especially defensively. Uh, they were able to limit the Mustangs uh, on offense, and they actually put a couple of good drives together uh, against the Mustang defense. One of them ended in a turnover on downs, unfortunately. But, you know, Arlington Heights showed why they were 8-0 in that second half and showed why they're also going to be a problem when playoff time comes around. Well, they certainly did. They have some dynamic kids on their team, um, you know, that come out and make plays on defense and offense. They have a great receiver. They have a, a really good quarterback. and It's very athletic, and then their run game is outstanding. You know, tonight they ran into a grapevine buzzsaw, but the playoffs are going to be another story. You don't know what could happen. These two teams could meet again. It is very possible with the playoffs coming up here in a couple of weeks. Tonight it was the Mustangs that prevailed to get that share of the, share of the district title. They can win it outright next week uh, in the season finale when they will be playing uh, against Trimble Tech. That will be over at Farrington Field in Fort Worth. And, you know, that, that's a Trimble Tech team that has really struggled this season. So I believe that's a game that, you know, the Mustangs should be able to handle their business in. Just looking at some of the final numbers tonight, Grapevine had just over 400 yards of total offense this evening, 348 of it on the ground. You know, for their part, Arlington Heights had 184 yards rushing. It's just when the game was in doubt, they couldn't muster much on offense. They'd get a couple of first downs, get midfield, get to just across midfield, and then get – behind the chains and be forced to punt or in one case had the turnover uh, in the first half. They did have two turnovers tonight. Grapevine only had the one, uh, but we did mention the penalties. Arlington Heights had six of them for 65 yards, and it's not so much the numbers, just that a couple of them came at crucial times in drives. Yeah, you can when you're Arlington Heights and, and you're a, a team that likes to churn the, those chains, right, and get three, four yards at a pop. You can't get backwards in the chains when you have the holdings and you have a sack or, or a lost play on first down, that's going to cause you issues. And then the turnovers, of course, you know, when you're going up against the grapevine offense that can't be stopped in that first half, which outside of their one turnover, they really couldn't be stopped in the first half. And so it's going to be tough for you. And tonight was just not the, the night that Arlington Heights envisioned, I'm sure. But from a script standpoint, it went perfect for grapevine. And again, you know, had to, everybody had to wait out that weather delay, which we weren't sure if we, you know, it, we weren't sure how it was going to go. We weren't sure if we were going to get this game in tonight, but the weather did clear up for us to allow us to play the game this evening and bring you this broadcast. Uh, I mean, we got this game in in just under two hours with a shortened halftime and, uh, you know, two teams that like to run the ball and really kept the clock moving. 
tonight. Parker Polk led the way. He was phenomenal tonight. 29 carries, 258 yards, and two touchdowns to lead the way offensively. Uh, Brian Furch, for his part, for the uh, Arlington Knights Yellow Jackets, he also had, again, a solid night. 19 carries for 147 yards and the touchdown. Uh, he did have that fumble in the second half. The game was probably decided at that point, but that really clinched it. Reed Watkins, five carries, 47 yards, and a touchdown. Rondell Carradine had another touchdown on the ground in the first half. Uh, just a really good night all around. But, again, just give credit to that grapevine defense for, you know, they bent a little bit here and there but did not break throughout the night and really kept that uh, Arlington Heights offense, which had come into this game averaging over 300 yards a game on the ground alone, kept them to under 300 yards of total offense. Well, the defense was was insanely good tonight, led by Latham Way. He was all over the field. I think in the first two series we called his name at least eight times, uh, just all over the place. And look at this scene, Jacob. I, I love this about high school football. I say storm the field, but we have the parents. We have uh, fans. We have everybody down I'll on the field. I'll tell you what, you had, you had parents and some really dedicated yeah. students that hung around through the, the deluge that was going on for the early part of the evening, you know, the, the Grapevine Band, which with the instruments and everything, you don't blame them at all. And the Phillies right. did not even come over to the high school tonight once this game got pushed back. You know, not having them sit out in the rain in this chilly weather. It is in the 50s tonight. Probably be a good idea. So it was, you know, kind of a sparse crowd. Heights had the same problem. You know, they didn't have as many fans as they probably normally would have had mm -hmm. because of the weather. But the ones that were here were supportive. And now you got a lot of them on the field. You know, technically, this was senior night right. for everybody, for band, players, drill team, everybody. And so maybe we'll see those celebrations happen in the first round of the playoffs, which will probably be here at Mustang I sure hope. I sure but hope so, Jacob. I look forward to that. The only thing we didn't that, see tonight was the great, was the goalpost get pulled up. Exactly. <laughs> that gold football makes the senior night festivities not having, I think, feel sure a does. lot better. Sure does. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight from Mustang Panther Stadium. The Mustangs clinch the number one seed in the playoffs out of 4-5A Division II. They clinch a share of the district title. They can clinch it out right next week with a victory over Trimble Tech, which will happen next Friday night over at Farrington Field in Fort Worth. For Tim, my broadcast partner, Tim Smith, uh, for our, our, our broadcast director, Trey Bell, my name is Jacob Dedimore. Your final score once again tonight, the Great by Mustangs beat the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets 28-7. Thank you to our sponsors of this broadcast, 121 Community Church, Chip Mercer Dentistry, Sh Classic Chevrolet, Bottle Cap Alley, Prosperity Bank, ER of Texas, Energy Attic, Greenleaf Roofing, Whirly Ball, livingforzachary.org, LoneStarGridiron.com, and the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra. Until next week, for Tim Smith, I am Jacob Dedimore. 28-7 is your final. The Mustangs win and clinch a share of the district title. Everyone have a great weekend, and go Mustangs.